Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Sydney. I am the same Sydney, I just have brown hair now. And it is an adjustment for all of us, trust me. Today we are going over all the books that I read in the month of August. So in the month of August, I read a total of seven books and then half of another, and we'll talk about it when we get there. But the very first book that I read in the month of August is Midnight Sun by Stephanie Meyer. For Midnight Sun, I did a solo review video on it, so I will link that down below. I don't really want to get into it too, too much because I'm sure, one, a lot of us are really tired about hearing about Twilight and Midnight Sun, so I don't want to do that to you here. But also, I mean, there's a whole video on it, so you can watch that for sure. But a quick little tidbit is it is Twilight told from Edward's perspective, so it is literally the same story, but told by Edward. And for me personally, I like Midnight Sun better than Twilight just because the point of view of a vampire is much more interesting than a 17 year old girl, especially one that is very bland and has no personality. <laughs> yes. Yes. Do we have any videos that Avi isn't in? I don't think so. She's a staple here on the channel. But for Midnight Sun, I ended up giving it like a four out of five. I mean, it obviously still has problematic aspects to it but I did enjoy it. I enjoyed reading it. Um, since Avi is present right now, we are going to talk about the book that she chose for me to read this month. Um, if you watched my August TBR video, it was the Spin the Bottle game, and on one of them I landed on Avi's pick. If you remember, Avi went right to Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi, and Avi knows how to pick them because this book was great. <laughs> I gave it five out of five, and I will let her pick more books for me in the future because she did great. <laughs> So in Children of Blood and Bone, we follow Zele. She lives in a place called Orisha, and in this kingdom, there is a ruthless king who has ordered all of the magi to be killed. Magi are the people in the story who are able to wield magic, and one of the magi who was killed was Zele's mother. And in the story, Zele teams up with a rogue princess in hopes to bring magic back and strike against the monarchy. They must outsmart the crown prince who is hell-bent on eradicating magic for good. This book was fantastic. Uh, like I said, I gave it five out of five. It was dark, it was brutal, it was funny. It was action-packed. Like I sat down and read 200 plus pages in one day, in one sitting, because I didn't want to put it down. This book made me cry. I was feeling all of the things. <laughs> there were a couple parts of the plot that I was like, eh, is that what really would happen? This like with how these characters are, how you get to know them. There was a couple points where I was like, is that something that that character would really do? But like also I'm not the author so I can't really say that it's not, you know? Um, but just in my opinion there were a couple Parts where I was like, eh, that doesn't sound like that character's personality or what they would do in a situation like that. However, that didn't stop me because there were so many plot twists and they were so good. I don't know, man. This was just really good. I really enjoyed it. And I'm so excited to pick up the second book, which is Children of Virtue and Vengeance, which Molly gifted me a little bit ago, which I'm so excited for. Thank you, Molly. I love you. And I'm very excited to pick that up soon. And I am so stoked that Avi decided to choose this book for me last month. The next two books that I read were The Tea Dragon Festival and The Tea Dragon Tapestry. Now on NetGalley, I got approved for the arc of Tea Dragon Tapestry, and I was immediately like, oh, I haven't even read the second one yet. So obviously I had to read the second one, and then I was able to read the third one. And I was so pleasantly surprised. I read the first one, The Tea Dragon Society, and I, I liked it. I thought it was very cute but I felt like the story didn't really give me much. Like I was left wanting a lot more. So I ended up giving that one like a three out of five, um, which is still good. Like it was adorable. It was really hard to give it anything lower than that because the illustrations are just so beautiful and the little tea dragons are so stinking cute. But the story was lacking in that first one, in my opinion. I don't know if you can hear my cat, but she's saying hello in the background. She's playing with her toy. She has a little blue ball and she's just having a great time downstairs. <laughs> but the progression of the Tea Dragon Society into the festival and tapestry book, we got to learn so much more about each character. Like each character arc got really developed and we were able to really get to know them a little bit better. I absolutely loved seeing that sign language were in was incorporated into the stories. I took a couple classes of sign language in college as an elective and it is a goal of mine to become fluid in American sign language. So I just really loved seeing that. And also I just, I just wanna adopt a tea dragon for myself. They're so freaking cute. <laughs> I don't think I said it yet. I gave both of these books like a 4.5 out of 5. I really enjoyed them and I thought that the progression of the story was really beautiful. The next book I read this month was the book club pick of the month for the Krusty Club book club hosted by Chanel Time and that was Radio Silence by Ellis Oseman. Guys, this book, 
was so good. I am upset that it took me so long to read it because it's probably one of my favorite books ever now, which I wasn't exactly expecting because if you remember, two months ago now. In July I read Solitaire and I didn't like it at all. I gave it like a 2 out of 5. I mean I liked some aspects of it but I really didn't enjoy it that much. But Radio Silence, like it's a 5 out of 5 for sure. I read this during my last 24 hour reading vlog and I will put that down below too if you want to check it out. But Radio Silence was just, it was so good. <laughs> Oh, I guess I'll tell you what it's about. Okay, so in Radio Silence, we followed Frances, and she is really obsessed with this podcast called Universe City. She's been a fan of that podcast since it began, and she's drawn little, like, doodles for it, posted it to her Tumblr page, and one day, the creator of the podcast messages her and asks if she would want to make illustrations for the videos. But then, through certain situations, she finds out who the creator of the podcast is, and they end up becoming friends. But also, obviously, a lot of other things happen. This, this story has a lot of moving parts, and I really loved how they all ended up coming together. And there's just, like, this mystery aspect of, like, what's really going on. There's just a lot of intrigue. Like, this is just, it's so good. It was a really good book. It was a really quick read. Obviously, I read it in one day, and it's really really good. <laughs> the next book that I read was A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. So in A Darker Shade of Magic, we have four Londons, really. So it is a white, red, gray, and black London. And all of these Londons are like different worlds, basically. And in it, we follow Kel, who's an Antari, and that means that he can use magic and he can travel in between the worlds of these Londons. And Kel is unofficially a undercover smuggler. So he is smuggling things from each of the Londons and selling them in other Londons, which is illegal. Now in the book, he runs into Delilah Bard, who is a thief, and she ends up stealing something from him, and he ends up having to go after her and get it back because it is a very important thing and quite dangerous. But they end up having to team up to go on this adventure and figure out the mess that they have made. This from I Spend the Bottle game, I landed on TBR Veteran, and this book has been on my TBR for a very, very long time. But I also wanted to get to this this month because Sabine and Yasmin were doing a read-along for the whole series, and they were calling it Conjuring of Read-alongs, which is super cute. And for the read-along, they were reading one book a month starting last month in August, so I wanted to get to this anyways. I had some thoughts on it. Um, I really, I did enjoy it. It wasn't like exactly what I thought it was gonna be, I guess. So I'm probably in the minority for my rating. I ended up giving it a 3.5 out of 5, which in my book is still like a good rating. Like it still means that I really enjoyed the book. It just wasn't everything for me. You know, it didn't do everything that I really loved to see. I feel like it was a little bit of a slow burn, um, had some slower parts to it. And I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit more action packed, I guess. But however, I mean, in those slower parts, I could still really appreciate like the imagery that was happening, the writing style of V.E. Schwab is fantastic. The worlds and the magic systems, like everything was really, really well done. There were just some parts where I was like, dang, I still have like 300 pages left or something. Like there was just a couple times where I was like, okay, let's go, let's get to it. <laughs> but of course then there were other parts of the book that I was like completely enthralled with it and I was really into it. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like, it just has that feeling in my heart where it's like, it's not quite a four or a five, you know? Like, it's just sometimes you, you just have to go with your, your gut and your heart. That's this rating for me, is a 3.5. And I'm comfortable with that. Um, I'm still gonna continue with the series. I am interested to in seeing, like, where it goes. But yeah, please don't hate me. <laughs> the next book that I read was Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. Five out of five. I have, like, zero bad things to say about this book and this series in general. This series is just so good. It is so unique and dark darkly intriguing. It's action-packed and the narrator for this series is absolutely phenomenal. He literally sounds like he should be narrating a dystopian story. My only issue with this book is how on edge and angry I was at the way that it ended. It was such a cliffhanger. It took all of my strength to not go pick up the toll right away and finish the series. And like, I could have, but I had other things that I needed to get to that month. So I mean, you know, willpower. I don't have much of it, but I used it. <laughs> so Thunderhead is part of the Scythe trilogy. And in this world, it is a dystopian utopia where the human population has overcome death. They no longer die from natural causes or diseases, but they still need a form of population control. So that is where sites come in and they are going around kind of gleaning with what they call killing people. Supposed to be unbiased, but also that is a whole part of the political system that starts happening. And it is just a clusterfuck of mayhem, basically. It's so good. I, I wish that I picked the series up sooner. And if you haven't, like definitely pick it up. <laughs>
Okay, I have one, two-ish books to talk about really quick. So another one that I started reading this last month was Split Tooth by Tanya Tagag. And this book I picked up because my bottle landed on reading a book by an indigenous author. And this book is very powerful. So it says that this book goes between fiction and memoir, myth and reality, and poetry and prose. And in it, we follow a girl who grows up in Nunavut in the 1970s. It says she knows the tedium of the everyday world and the raw, immoral power of ice and sky, the seductive energy of the animal world. She knows the ravages of alcohol and violence at the hands of those she is, should be able to trust. She sees the spirits that surround her and the immense power that dwarfs all of us. When she becomes pregnant, she must navigate all of this. So this book, I am about halfway done with it. I ended up not being able to finish it yet. I started reading it in that 24 hour reading vlog that I finished Radio Silence in. And my plan was to knock this one out too, but let me tell you where I'm at. So with this book, Tanya Tagog's writing style is so unique. It is raw, it is poetic, it is powerful and the story itself is also super powerful. However, the content matter in the story is very, very dark, and it does have trigger warnings of rape, abuse, alcoholism, and those are things that you have to consider before picking it up for sure. The reason why I haven't finished it yet is because while I was reading it during that time period of the reading vlog, I felt my mind kind of separating from the story, you know, kind of like as a defense mechanism. Like it was very hard for me to read and process everything that was happening. So my mind started like wandering and that's not how this book is meant to be heard. So I ended up putting it down. So I do plan on picking it up and finishing it soon. It won't take me long to finish it, but I just want to make sure that it has my attention. So those were all the books that I did end up reading this month, but I, there is one more book that I kind of want to mention really quick. So once the month started going, I realized that there was an Indian readathon hosted by a couple of friends on booktube. And so I had good intentions because I wanted to participate, but I didn't know that it was a thing until I had already posted my spin the bottle video. So the readathon, they had their like group pick book, you know, that all of them were going to read. And that was the namesake. So in my mind, I was like, okay, I can at least read the, the group book and participate that way. But ultimately I didn't end up managing my time well enough. And by the time that it actually got to my house, the readathon only had like two more days left before the actual live show to talk about this book. And I just didn't have enough time to to actually finish it before. But at the very least, it is now on my physical TBR and I will be picking it up soon. And then the last two that I kind of just want to mention is in my spin the bottle video, I mentioned that there were two like secret books that I'm having for a secret TBR. Um, I didn't get to those either. Uh, <laughs> August was a weird month. It was very hard for me to focus on reading. So I obviously didn't get to any of the books on my secret TBR, just the ones that you guys know about. So those two mysterious books are still on my secret TBR and I will get to them as soon as I can. But now it is September and I am already behind on my September reads. So we are not doing well, friends. <laughs> but that is all I have for you today. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video. I appreciate your support. And as always, be kind to one another and happy reading. <laughs>